In this video, we're going to talk about adding hyperlinks to your Adobe Captivate project. Now, before we get started on the technical how-to stuff, I just want to say that there is a little bit of risk in what we're talking about here. And the reason is, is that, you know, when you have full control of your Adobe, Pro Adobe Captivate project, you can decide what goes on any page. You can embed certain documents right into the SCORM file. You can, you can do all this stuff at any time you link to outside of your little world here. Uh, and that includes like uh, policy documents within the corporation, documents that exist on the World Wide Web, web pages that exist on the World Wide Web. Um, YouTube videos, uh, web pages that you embed in a, a, a little frame or window in your course. Anytime you do that, you're running a little bit of a risk. And the areas that I would think about is that, first of all, that content may not be there a year from now. You know, so suddenly your course is broken six months, a year from now, simply because the content that you relied on to be a part of your Adobe Captivate project has been deleted or is gone or whatever. The other aspect too is it could change, right? So that document or that website or that uh, PDF file or that YouTube video, while it might still be there, uh, maybe the content has changed. Maybe the original author has changed their uh, opinion about things. And of course, now you're linking to something that uh, that is in contradiction with your course. So. Uh, be cautious, you know, and consider that uh, if you are going to link to outside documentation that you have uh, a really good plan for refreshing your courses on a fairly frequent basis, something to check the material from time to time to make sure that the content is still there. So again, that, uh, that's all I'll say about that. There's certainly uh, there's much debate over whether um, you know linking to outside documentation uh, is a sound design decision on your part. Um, in the end, of course, your, your subject matter expert or your stakeholder that you're working with may decide that that's what they want in the course. So obviously you're all about customer service and providing them what they need. You certainly can do it and here's how you do it technically. So I've got a couple of examples that I'm going to show you. Three examples of how you can do a hyperlink in Adobe Captivate. Uh, again, I'm working with uh, Adobe Captivate 9. Uh, but all these versions uh, or, or uh, version of these versions should work in most versions of Captivate. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a hyperlink right in the middle of a text box. And I'm just going to highlight the, uh, the here and click here to open the policy document, etc., etc. And then I'm going to go over to my properties panel and scroll down until I get to the character section. And if you've uh, not noticed these before, there are three little icons. And these icons are insert symbol. So this is very similar to a character map. And uh, there's insert variable. So you could have an inv uh, a variable um, within the text on your screen. And the last one is the one that we're interested in, and that's insert hyperlink. And it's real easy to use. I just click on this button here, and this little tiny window pops up. And I'm going to first of all select what type of thing I'm linking to. Uh, the default is web page, but you could be opening a file. You could be, in fact, a hyperlink can be send an email to some particular email address. You could actually hyperlink to another slide within this very same project. Uh, you can open another project, etc., etc. So there's a lot of options here, but really what we're talking about today is opening up a web page or an external file somewhere on the internet. So we'll keep this web page for now. And uh, they give you the default of adobe.com, a little self-promotion uh, on their part, but there's nothing wrong with that. We'll stick with that example, but you could put any hyperlink you want in here, any URL to a website, a web page, or even to a PDF document that might exist on another company's website. Now the last thing you do before you click on, on OK is you need to select how that hyperlink is going to open. And uh, quite frankly, the, the four choices are here. Really, there's only one that you need to be concerned about, and that's new. Uh, 
I recommend that you always choose new because a new browser window, and that's what we're talking about here, a new browser window is not going to interfere with anything else that's going on on your user's screen or desktop at that time. If you choose current, it's going to replace the e-learning course that your user is running through with that hyperlink. And of course, that's going to break the connection between the e-learning project and the learning management system that, of course, uh, the user is running your course from. Um, so current is definitely not what you want to use. New, unless, you know, let's say, I can, I can think of one example where current would be applicable, and that's if you were having your user fill out, let's say, an evaluation survey at the end of your course, you know, what did you think of this course, what did you think of the narrator, etc., etc. You You could certainly take away from that. Once the user has uh, scored their final quiz and that has been communicated to the learning management system, certainly current would be fine, but even new might be still recommended. You're not going to mess around with anyone's stuff. The uh, parent and top, this has to do with uh, uh, existing windows that are open on the user's desktop. So, for example, if you're running um, within a frame of a course, you know, the parent or top uh, uh, HTML page will be, uh, you know, have to do with iframes and stuff like that. Again, there's risk in uh, that that being, you know, perhaps the LMS window itself, and you don't really want to sever that connection between the e-learning course and the learning management system. So, again, I just say, you know what, let's stick with new. I use it almost 100% of the time when I do this. So, all I need to do now is click OK. And that creates what you would expect to see in a typical hyperlink. You could, of course, highlight this and change, you know, the formatting, the font, the font color, and so forth. But I recommend that you have a difference between the rest of the text to indicate to the end user that this is a hyperlink. There's something they can click here that's going to take them somewhere else. So that's the first way of doing hyperlinks in Adobe Captivate. The other thing you can do is you can have it be a part of an action associated with a button or, you know, a smart shape being used as a button as I've got here. This is what this is here. So all you need to do is, uh, in the case of a smart shape, make sure you've checked off Use as Button first. And then in the Actions tab, which is part of your Properties panel as well, change the success ca uh, the, the success uh, result from Go to Next Slide or Continue or whatever it might be to Open URL or File. So you're going to be uh, confronted with pretty much the same information that we had when we were creating a hyperlink in text, but we're just going to put in here www.adobe.com. And again, like before, we can choose whether it's going to be the current window, parent window, top window, or new window. Again, stick with new. Now, with certain versions of Adobe Captivate, you'll have the option to check off or uncheck continue playing the project. Uh, the idea here is that when I click this, continue playing the project will mean that it will go from a state of pause back to play, and it will continue to play your project in the background while the user looks at adobe.com in this case. Uh, I would recommend that you uncheck this because, of course, until they're finished doing whatever it is they need to do on that web page, you don't want your e-learning project to continue in the background. So that's one another way you can do um, hyperlinks within Adobe Captivate projects. So the other thing you can do, and this is a, an alternative, and this certainly was an option with earlier version uh, versions of Captivate when we didn't have that checkbox for continue playing the project in the background. Uh, you can do this through an advanced action. The other thing is, of course, that you might be clicking this button and a whole number of things might be happening, and only one of those things might be opening a website or a document. So you could do it in an advanced action for that reason as well. So let's do that right now. So I've selected the button again. We're going to change this from open URL to file to execute advanced action and we're going to create an advanced action. So I'm going to click on the little folder icon here to create a new advanced action. 
and that will open up the advanced action window. And we'll just call this something like policy uh, policy underscore document and this will open up the policy document. So the action you're going to run is we're going to um, open URL or file and here we're going to go to www.adobe.com. Now if this document existed on your desktop for example you could link to that document title or name just by using this three dot button here and that would allow you to select the document and then it would you know replace the adobe.com web address with the name of that document and the location like before you can select the window so again the same options available new parent current top again new is what I recommend and of course uh, this is fine the way it is it's done you can add whatever additional advanced actions that you want uh, but this will open that URL so let's just save that as an action and that works good and we'll hit close so that's that's available there let me just throw on a button here we'll just put an actual real button onto this web page and we'll just make that sort of like a next button the reason I want this is I just want to be able to pause this slide because we're just going to run it and test it out here so let's just do a preview we'll just use next five slides that works fine and here we go so this is what this looks like here so I've done this as a responsive design so of course uh, with with Captivate 9 you've got the five breakpoints which is great so here's my links here click here to open the policy document so if I click this what's going to happen is a new window opens and takes me in this case to adobe.com works perfectly and completely as expected there we are adobe.com let's try it with the button so we have this button here and we'll just click the security policy not really what it is but again opens up adobe.com or whatever web page you want whatever document on the internet you want works perfectly fine guys if you like the videos that I'm producing for you I encourage you to subscribe to my channel and if you thought this video was entertaining hilarious fun educational whatever go ahead and give me a thumbs up